Hello. I want to demonstrate the use of QTVLM, or you could use any elect e chart program to do this, but I want to use the this uh, ECS, electronic charting system, as a way to do a maneuvering board problem. In this case, we're going to look at solving a radar problem, and not necessarily a little bit advanced even radar problem. Um, so let's do this. Here's the problem we're looking at. We have our own vessel, our own ship going and steering zero, zero true. The speed's 11 knots, and we see a target coming down the pike here. At 11 o'clock, it's 080, bearing 080, 12 mile, 12.0 off. 11.06, it's still 080, 10.8, 11, 12. So it's 0, 6, and 12, and then uh, 9.6. So we, we immediately know we have a problem here. We have, no matter what time it is, this has the same bearing. So this is headed uh, directly for a collision course. And so at some point, we have to maneuver. Now, whether or not we want to do it, uh, uh, you know, Let's say here, when does, what's our problem going to be? Let me find out. In our case, the, we are going to, uh, an example, when the range of the contact decreases to six nautical miles. Okay, so that's how long we're going to watch it. So when the, when the radar range decreases to six miles, we want to turn course so that our CPA is two nautical miles. So we want to open that up from zero to two, and we're going to change, uh, change course without changing speed. And so the question is, when that radar range is six miles, what course do we turn to? Right now we're steering zero, zero, zero. Okay, so that's the problem. And so I set this up. See, uh, different programs have different ways of doing this. The way that I'm, I mocked up the maneuvering board here, or your radar sheet, you just put a mark, you put any mark, and say I want to put so many rings on it. Like I, I could put five, six rings at one mile apart and say okay, and that's, that's the way that is. Uh, and, and so you can do that. That's real handy, especially it's handy when you mock, okay, I'm d distracted again here, but if I mock up, uh, yes, delete it. But if I, I set those rings on my radar, on my, I mean on my icon, on my e-chart program, I can very easily interpret then what I see on the radar screen. That makes a nice other video. Uh, okay, so here we go. Let's look at the data. And so here's this, my own ship here. And then here is 12 miles. Uh, here's the first sight at 12 miles, six minutes later, 10.8, and then 9.6 at 12 minutes later. And so the normal plotting of six minutes in radar, that's a pretty standard because your own vessel moves uh, in six minutes, one-tenth of your boat speed. So... Um, we, we can use that trick to, for plotting without, without doing some calculator, without getting out of calculators, usually, often. So, so here is the, and then again, what you would see on your radar now is you would just see these rings, and then you would see a dot here, a dot here, and a dot here. Now we have to either, this is a little, what we're doing is a little bit elaborate to do right on the screen, but you can do some of this on the screen. So let's first of all find out what is the true course of this, uh, true course and speed of the target we're looking at. And, um, and we know the CPA is zero now, so that's uh, um, done. Uh, and the way we would do that is we just, the way we teach this, now there's different books do it different ways, but the way we teach it is we, ma we imagine we're sailing, now we're headed due north like that, due north. And so we imagine we're sailing past a buoy, locked dead in the, wa dead in the water buoy. And so we, we want to then plot what the trail of that buoy, called the buoy trail. So what would that vector look like, which is the buoy trail that we're going by? So if we're going 11 knots, then in six minutes it's 1.1, and I'm going, tw I'm going to plot clear out here to this 12 minutes, so I'm going to go t 2 times 12. So that's 2.2 miles. So that represents... Uh, 11, 11, uh, 11 knots. 1.1 in 6 minutes, 1.1 in 6 seconds, 6 minutes. Okay, and so that's there. Then I draw a line from this point to, the la to this, to this uh, last observation 12 minutes from here. And this, point, this line here tells us what we're, what we're looking at, what, what's out there that we're, we're having this near collision with. Not near collision. We're on an exact collision course at the moment. So this vessel is actually traveling, let's see, what is this? Uh, 
it's going in direction 306.3, 306A, 306.3 we get, and it's gone three miles, okay, three miles in 12 minutes. So in six minutes, it went 1.5 miles and that is a t and 10 times that this is a ship going 15 knots 15 knots in direction uh, in, in uh, this this direction right here actually that's its heading 306 now you see if you just shot from the hip and saw these lines coming like this you would get out your binoculars and start looking for red and green you're not looking for red and green you're looking for just red you're only looking at this side of the boat ship Okay, so now we got our ch now we, now we're set up to know what's going on. Now we want to decide that when this target is going to keep creeping in here, six you know six minutes later here, six minutes later here, six minutes about here. So when this is six miles off, we want to turn, and we want to turn so that the new CPA is two miles. So there's different ways to solve that. Different books do it different ways. Here's here's one way hopefully with some kind of logic to it. So what we would do is say here, when we get to here, we want the new, this is a, called the uh, relative, track, relative motion track. Of course, the uh, direction of relative motion, this line right here. We want the direction of relative motion to be like this, from six miles on out. It's gotta go by here, these are two mile rings, and that's just perpendicular to here. So that's the line we want. Now, uh, and so, what we need to do is figure our course. So we know what the ship is, the target's doing. The target's doing this pink one. We're doing the green one. The tar ship's doing, a, the target's doing a pink one. So I can just come over here and at this point, draw this in. Now the way that you draw these lines in the QTVLM, you would do as a pathway, you call create a pathway. You have to give it a name. You know, some, it doesn't really matter what the name is. And then you say append POIs, and then I draw a line like that, say. And then I can draw another line or escape. I can delete that and delete that, yes. And then you see now I can read the range and bearing very nicely for that one. But if I actually want it to go the other way, then I go in here, right click, uh, uh, no, 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 uh, right click, edit the pathway, and go down and reverse it. Now I can drag this one same out here and go and be reading the bearing in the other direction. Okay, so that's how you do it. It's very, it's very convenient. Uh, delete all marks, yes. Okay, so, and that's the way I made this mark for six, six, nine point six, ten point, you know, all those marks. That's the way I did it that way. Okay, so then, so what I did was, uh, then I want to, basically, if I had parallel rulers, or there's some nav apps that actually lets you grab this line and move it. But this one doesn't do that. I, actually, I think I've only seen one nav app that actually lets you do that. But in this case, we, we can't do that. So we would just drop another mark here, make a pathway here, and we know we've got to get, this was 3.0 at 306.3. This should be presumably the same thing. Uh, wait a minute, let's see what it is. Uh, three at 306.3, okay, that's close. Oh, is that identical even? Yeah, it's identical. Wow, that's good. Okay, uh, so that is this line. Now, that is equivalent to this. Now we need to put in our buoy trail for our new heading. And, but we don't know what the heading is, but we know for sure what the length of it is. The length of it's 2.2 miles. So what I do here is I went to this mark, edit, and I put in one ring at 2.2 miles and made it some light gray, like that, okay. And so that's that, and so I draw that. Now, where this crosses this, then that is now my, this is now my new heading, which is my new heading here. Um, that's 062, 062. So when I, okay, so that's the answer to the problem, 062 is what we would do. We would let the target come in here. We are now headed this way. We are headed this way. And this guy, uh, well, let's say we're headed this way like this. This guy's headed this way. If we want to clear him by two miles, we're gonna have to turn to the right by uh, uh, to 062. And that, that's the answer to the question. 
And uh, I'm going to leave that there. And then uh, now what I'm okay, I'm going to leave it there. Now I'm going to crank on our radar simulator program and drive through this exercise so you see what it actually looks like from the from the boat when you're doing it. Okay, thank you. This set up to demo the example we just did, solved it um, mathematically, and now I want to demo within the radar trainer. And this is not our latest version of the radar. It's an early, an early version, but it's all we need to show this, and it has this nice double display here. So if I look here, I turn on the EBL, wait, turn on the EBL, and you see I've got this guy coming. Whoop, whoop, whoop. He's coming right at me at 080. Where is that? 080 relative. So this is exactly the problem. He started out at 12. I've got range ring 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 like that. So I can shut off the EBL. And let me repeat and start again. Also, this is cranked up. I'm running 30 times faster than life. So we don't have to sit here forever. And the problem that we solved was we had this target coming in on an obvious collision course dead on like that and we decided that at at 2 4 at 6 degrees off we were going to change we wanted to change course at 6 degrees off i mean 6 miles off so that our closest point of approach is then 2 miles out here and so, and the solution we got was 62 degrees. So I'm going to modify. I'm going to, um, I'm going to t t turn to course, and I think it was 62. And so that's 62. And let's see, two, four, six. When that gets here, I want to do it, right? I want to change. Okay, let's see one more. That's pretty close. So there, I just changed course. Now. What, and you see down here in the live motion, I made a big change here. That's, that's uh, what you're supposed to do, right? You're supposed to, according to the rules of the road, you're supposed to make a big change, at least 60 degrees. I just made a change of 60 degrees, actually. And so uh, that this target B over here, who has a right-of-way, can see on his radar what I'm doing. And now look. And so this, it's not magic that I'm actually ending up right at two degrees, two miles off. That's not magic at all. We sat down on that vector diagram in the last uh, video and calculated that. And so that's a demo of that. And so we're turning right to go behind the guy as we're supposed to. And so, and that's a demo of this in the radar simulator, Starpath Radar Trainer.